He's, Mr. Weller has asked for and received one visit from the council of the controversial partial owner who presented only one new piece of uh, relative information in that meeting. That information has since been placed into question as to its importance or true relevance to the decision before us. Additionally, the item was not unanimous when it went to the board from the PNZ Commission, which adds a level of concern. That vote was a five to one vote. Um, Excuse me, Milton. Yeah. That was when? The that, five to one vote. That was in January. In January. Okay. And let me continue. There's a couple of paragraphs left of Mr. Weller's comments. Although there are several politically sensitive matters that can be put forth as potentially important, such as previous commercial use, private property rights, county actions, creating misleading understandings or threat of litigation and fear tactics. It's my opinion that we as elected officials need to root out the right thing to do legally when possible and deal with any consequences created by potentially wrong decisions in the past. We are, in my opinion, elected to see through the rhetoric and find factual truth when possible. Without the benefit of hearing the final discussion and input at the meeting on the 19th, I can only state the following. At this time, the legal opinion presented by our county attorney's office as compared, as compared to all the facts presented to me over the past several months appears to me to do nothing more than take a politically comfortable position and does not clearly show what is legal or not. After reviewing the evidence presented to me, I believe the county is at more risk long term, financially and ethically, if they decide to approve the controversial parcel in the GCR. I realize that I have no vote in this matter since I cannot attend on the 19th. I know of no proxy system for our board, but I did want my general concerns to be heard. Thank you for listening. Uh, he signed it very well. Okay. I believe we got um, Joe Young on the phone. And I understand there's another uh, attorney. Scott Rose. Scott Rose is also on the uh, telephones. Good morning, gentlemen. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Um, you, you know, I believe, you know, this, this is uh, something, you know, that we need to discuss. It's been ongoing since January of this year. And, um, you know, to postpone it, you know, I don't think that that would really do us any good because, you know, it's that's going to delay everything probably this fall, August. At least. Yeah. At least. And, you know, but this is something that needs to be talked about, discussed, and approved or disproved, you know, whatever the board decides to do. And unfortunately, Mr. Weller, you know, is not here. You know, if some of this nature is very important. I think I, I would be here, you know, to participate in the discussion. With that, you know, I, we're going to go ahead and discuss it. Okay. For the, um, this is a public hearing. So I'm going to open the public hearing. You know, and um, I have a lot of individuals that do want to speak. You'll be allowed three minutes. And I'm going to go with, you know, ten that are opposing this. You know, it's not, you know, we can't be repeating ourselves, ladies and gentlemen, you know. If there's anything different, then let's, let's state it, you know. But if it's just, I oppose it, I oppose it, you know, that's... So, um, with that, you know, of course, um, if there's other individuals that um, are in support of it, I do want to hear that too. With that, first one we have is David Bennett. If you come up to the mic and please, um, for the record, give your name. Good morning. Uh, my name is Dave Bennett, and uh, I'm a 30-year taxpayer, uh, and I'm speaking for 175 property owners through the Greer Coalition. I think that's critical. We are including residential, uh, some business, some resort owners in our membership. As Milt M M M mentioned, uh, for about 18 months we've worked on this together and uh, we have come to an agreement, I believe, on 27 of 28 of the properties. Uh, the one that we are in disagreement on is what we call the uh, CK Cabin Site APN 1020821A, and if we could, uh, I'd like to just refer to it to 0210A because of the three minutes. Uh, you have a packet that we have given you, and 
this would be something I think is really critical at this stage, and that's to look at reference map one number one. Uh, it looks like this. <coughs> Just to clarify, we do not have disagreement with 001L and 001K, which is what we call the cattle case, uh, existing already conditional uh, use permit approved. That is not in contention. Uh, what we are very concerned about in dispute is parcel 021A, which is to what I call the north of cattle case. So I think it's critical that we uh, know what parcel we're talking about. The CK cabin parcel 021A does not nor has ever qualified for lawful GCR zoning to the requirements defined in Article 6, Section 601B. The key terms in 601B are one, that are legally being used, and two, nightly single-family cabin rentals not located on resort property are excluded. In other words, the property must, number one, have recognized legal commercial resort use, and number two, a single-family cabin rental is not qualified for automatic GCR zoning, if it is not on a legal resort property. I think these are key issues. Um, the exact wording in the ordinance is, and I'll try and read it quickly. Okay, three minutes is up, sir. Can somebody else continue for a year before you left on? Sure. Maybe the second person that's... I believe I have... Um, David Martin, could the next could one. Could I possibly use my wife's minutes? Yeah, I decline and let him use my minutes. Okay. What's your I name, ma'am? Really I'm sorry. Okay. <sighs> Continue then. Rather than read directly from Article 6, I'm going to skip that part. But unfounded assertions that parcel 021A is qualified for GCR are based on speculation. First of all, excuse me. Stop that. I don't have your. I don't have I'm your. Sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Stop it. Okay, continue. Okay. Unfounded assertions that parcel 021A is qualified for GCR are based on speculation that this parcel was somehow included in a third acre in the 1995 Cattle Case 1.9 uh, conditional use permit process. In matter of fact, a review of all of the county documents of record in the conditional use permit hearing process for 1995, only a 1.9 acre CUP was applied for, heard by two Apache uh, counting bodies and granted a conditional use permit. The documents that you have, and there should be nine of them, again, only site plan that was ever subject to a public application, a public agenda, a public hearing, and a public discussion, and a public decision was 1.9 acres. A three-acre site plan was never the subject of public application, public agenda, public hearing, public discussion, or granted no development rights. In your packet, uh, you also have an April 20th, 1993, uh, a stable CUP application. Further examination of the Overacker Stables CUP clearly establishes that the CUP terminated south of the section line between 11 and 14, and therefore was never a legal commercial stable operation on the CK parcel 021A. Uh, 